YouTube, it's Matt. And camera guy, Kurt. With Olympus Reptiles here for another episode of the Olympus Reptiles News. And today we've got some new and exciting futures, including what's in the Cobra basket. I don't know. And a lot of channels to feature. Plus, stay tuned to the very end to see our interview with Brian Cusco, which we were really excited to do. But let's get it rolling. We're going to start with Kurt today. Well, I watched a video from Hissy Fit Reptiles, and it's an unboxing video. It was from VIP Constrictors, and they did a really good job of making sure that their balls doesn't get out of the bag. And they had a little bit of trouble of getting the bag open. It is very important to always keep your balls in your bag. Yeah, you don't want them to escape. No, if your balls are out of your bag, I think that's a medical problem. Yeah. They're definitely a medical problem. Well, I watched something today, and let me tell you, what is green and named Kermit? Kermit the Frog? No. No, it is actually Viper Keeper's Green Mamba. He has a green mamba named Kermit, and if you watch, you can see how he helps a green mamba with stuck shed. Remember, it's a green mamba. It can kill you. It has stuck shed. Pretty cool video. Bro, are we ready? Are we ready to see what's in the cobra basket? Yes. Let's see what's in the cobra basket. So what's in our cobra basket? Here is where we're going to show you the snake of the week. It's going to be a new segment we do with the news. And this week we have a GHI ball python. This guy is awesome. He was produced by Tall Grass Reptiles. He had the exact look of a GHI we're looking for. The high metallic coloration. The dark, just beautiful. But he doesn't have a name. He's got two clutches he's fathered in our incubator and no names. So what I want you to do right now as we show you this beautiful GHI is go down in the comments section and give us some name suggestions. Remember, it has to be mythology. I don't care if it's Greek, Roman, Nordic. doesn't matter where from, but all of our names deal with mythology. So go there, help us name our beautiful GHI. We're going to put him back in the basket now and get back to the news. I also watched TNT Balls. You ever watch those guys? Yes, I watched them. They totally sold out. TNT Balls, you completely sold out. They did a kitten video. It's nothing, there's no reptiles. All it is is two cats, two little baby kittens wrestling. And kittens wrestling are just too cute to be on the internet. You should never sell out and do just cat videos. I mean, YouTube is no place for little cute cat videos. It's just not a way to do things. Right? Anyway, back to you, Kurt. Well, I watched a video of uh, Brian Cusco, and he had a model in one of his Triple B TV videos. Was she hot? Well, the model was a snake. Mm -hmm. Basically, he has a snake that he can move around, and it'll stay in the pose, and it's a perfect model. Perfect model of a snake? Yes. Awesome. She's like a model. I can just pose her and she'll just kind of hold the pose. Oh, and it looks like make her flinch. How about this one, baby? I won't make you flinch this time. Oh yeah, nice. Well, I watched DM Exotics. He didn't have a model, but that dude went to Malaysia. Let me tell you, man, you guys gotta watch that video. Usually I make fun of things here just to be humorful, but the guy actually let these huge bugs like crawl all over him and it is as scary as hell. I'm not talking like bugs or bugs. Or I'm talking like bugs, Kurt. Like literal freaking bugs. Like the guy's like a bodybuilder. It's the size of his forearm. It's a bug. I just wanted to get some of these in the video. They are super cool. Any kind of any kind of bugs that are big size usually are of interest to me. I, I'm not going to sleep for a month, so thank you for that DM Exotics. He also had a cat snake and a rat snake. Guess which one is bigger? Probably the, the cat snake. What do you think? But actually it was the rat snake. Big old rat snakes, little bitty cat snakes he showed. Very awesome video. And with that, did you hear about Going Youper? Um, no. What happened? Going Youper is a good friend of ours on here. You know, we did an interview with him and he, uh, he quit YouTube. He quit YouTube? He quit YouTube, but it, it, it's fine. It's cool. Because he's back already. So welcome back to YouTube, Going Youper. I'm really ready to come back to YouTube, but I've been thinking a lot about it. I mean, you've all got me through, you know, a pretty rough time moving here to a place where I didn't know anybody and being my closest friends and, and people that I can count on and talk to. And 
something I really enjoy is making videos and talking with you all, and I love this community. Um, I also watched a video from Family Jewels, and they caught her in the act. Caught her in the act of what? Well, they caught one of their snakes in the act of laying eggs. We got three out, and it looks like there's at least another one or two left in her. Oh, wow. I caught her dogs in the act of barking. Hold on one second. Shut up, Jack! <laughs> we filmed, we just filmed. <laughs> we also filmed with Boxing Bow recently, and I watched his channel. You know, when he was on here, he, he kind of shared how his son helps run the camera. On his latest video, he showed his daughter and talked about how his daughter got him into tarantulas and that she's now getting into snakes because of him. And I just thought it was a really cool family experience with, with Boxing Bow. One of the things I love about him. But you know what the actual question on the video is, for me anyway? What's the question? Who has a cooler shirt? He's wearing Jurassic Park. She's wearing Five Finger Death Punch. So go check it out. I want you to tell us here and on Boxing Boa's channel, who has the cooler shirt, Jurassic Park, or Five Finger Death Punch? Kurt, what's your vote? Uh, my vote is for Five Finger Death Punch. See, I'm going to go Jurassic Park. I just got to love the classics. I got you into something that I really liked, which is tarantulas. Yes. I decided that I should try and get into something that you really like, which is the snakes. See, this is what I'm talking about. Reptiles, arachnids, family time together. Which also brings us to Reese's Pythons. Since we're talking about, you know, classics, and the guy's name is Reese's. It's one of my favorite classic candy bars. Reese's Pythons. Do you know what polo is? Yeah, it's a type of t-shirt, you know, fancy polo. Fancy polo shirt? Yeah. I think it's also Spanish for chicken. Chicken. Like, you know, Los Polos Hermanos from Breaking Bad? Yeah. 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 This, you know what else it is? T-shirt? No. It's, his, it's actually Reese's Python's Pied Male is named Polo. Because when you let your family name your snakes, you get things like Polo. That means don't forget to help us name ours. No, Polo. His name is Polo. He's in shade, so he don't look as white. You want to say hello to everybody? He's saying hello. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this Polo, my pied male. Well, Bill from BC Pythons, he went to the dark side. The dark side? Yes. And he's talking about the five reasons why he uh, has tarantulas. Okay. On the dark side, is there much fear in him, you sense? Um, a little bit. <laughs> Good day. And today is my five reasons for keeping tarantulas here on the dark side. Master Yoda wouldn't be happy. <laughs> we're probably going to... Damn it, we're going to get sued by Disney now. <laughs> so, to get away from the Disney thing, I launched TA Exotics, and he shows off his Dubia Roach Colony, which is kind of getting started, and it's really kind of neat to watch. They make great feeders, but as you can already tell by me talking about DM Exotics, I, I hate bugs. Like, I'll be honest, I love reptiles, I love rattlesnakes. I am not really a bug guy. Bugs kind of creep me out. And Kurt makes me watch the bug videos, and now I'm going to have, like, I swear to God, like, nightmares. Like nightmares. Well, what, what's wrong with the roaches? Are you afraid they're going to, like, lay eggs in your ear or something? They're just roaches. <laughs> Creepy. Some of the roaches. Some of the roaches. Roaches. Um, this is a young colony. It's not established yet. Uh, they're not breeding yet. Creepy. Oh, Kurt, I'm sorry. Guys, I'm sorry. You're sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little sorry about that. A little sorry. Woo! Woo! That was bad. All right. Uh, again, bugs, roaches. Woo! That'll make it better. Promise. <laughs> I also watched Reptile Jones. Reptile Jones? Reptile Jones. You know what he does? He takes heat rocks. You know those things we all talk about and hate, and we all talk about how crappy they are? He actually puts them to the test to see if they're as crappy as we think. So I'd say go watch that. See if... And how much heat rocks suck. Take a look at heat rocks. Probably one of the reptile equipment that gets hated on the most. And I'm going to guess most people haven't even used them. Anything else on your list of things you watched? Nope. 
Nope, you're all out. Yeah. Well, it leaves it to me, and I got one more, and that is our good friend Josette Taylor. And Josette Taylor, she ta does a video where she takes her snake Mavis, and it goes on a trip to the vet, and through the, the wonders of technology, you can actually see what Mavis is thinking the entire video. It's, it's amazing. I did not know we could do that, did you? I didn't know that. The snake's thoughts are, are there. You can actually see them. They appear. It is amazing. So make sure and go watch Josette Taylor. Figure out what Mavis is thinking. Why you're seeing uh, a tub with a ball python instead of me. I'm a nurse. I'm not a vet. And so I, and, and I look like death. So terrible to shed. I don't know what's up with that. But um, anyway, along with... All right, guys. Stay tuned because now... We're going to go to our interview with the one and only Brian Cusco coming to you live. Well, live to us, not live to you, from Hawaii. All right, YouTube, it is time to start our interview portion today for our Olympus Reptiles news. And we are here live with Brian Cusco in Hawaii. The guy's in Hawaii. <laughs> We're in Kansas. You know how jealous I am right now, right? Like, I'm sorry. That's, uh, that's, there's nothing I can do about it at this point. There, there's an ocean. I'm going to right to the screen. Come here. I'm going to grab you right by your face. I'll go. There, there's a guy fishing in the background. Man, it's ter here it's like 40 degrees. But that's all right. So we're ready to get to some questions. Questions. Yeah, I love questions. Well, you've seen how this works. We're going to ask 12 questions. Four, like we ask everybody. Four specific to you. And four come out of my random question bucket that has new questions in it from viewer suggestions. Oh, so. Yeah, gotta love those Vikings. So the first one is, like it always is, what is your biggest success in the hobby? My biggest success, in my opinion, is finding the community of reptiles. Because I've been keeping snakes since I was a kid, but I didn't know anything about the community until I came out here to Hawaii, took a whole hiatus from the whole thing, came back and found that there was actually a whole community of people that kept reptiles and were in touch with each other. and. To me, that's been the busy, biggest success so far, as far as reptiles are concerned, is finding that there were hundreds, thousands of other people <laughs> that kept reptiles and that there were lots of cool people that did. It's, that's the biggest thing for me. Yeah, you know, before we had the internet and things like that, for us, us guys like my age who started, you know, the internet wasn't a thing. Like, it was there, but not like it is today. So you didn't realize you were always the weird guy if you had snakes. You didn't know there was other people like you. So it is kind of definitely a big thing. But that also brings us to, what was your biggest failure in the hobby? My biggest failure, and I've watched you guys' interviews before, so I knew you were going to ask for this. Um, yeah. And so I thought about it, and it's, yeah, I, had, I had an albino ball python at one point, and was going through a really bad shed, and this snake had had issues from the get-go, and uh, I went to go soak it in a small tub of water, and I let it stay in there too long, and it, it died in that tub. Mm. And I always look back on that as the biggest failure I've ever had um, and I of course now anytime I do something like that I set a timer and and make sure that I don't do anything too long but that's easily without a doubt my biggest failure was for, with that albino ball python I I still have his card and I keep it up on my wall as a reminder not to mess up ever again in any way that's my definitely my biggest failure and, you know and it's the thing though we all have mistakes like that throughout I mean if you keep a lot of reptiles you're going to have them and to learn from a mistake that you make and to prevent it from happening again, that makes that failure, you know, where there's at least a silver lining to it. You know what I mean? I, it's yeah. similar to my first clutch. I, I killed because of humidity. And I, it always bothers me. And I'll never forget that first clutch. But now, you know, I'm very anal about checking my incubation, making sure everything's right, not being too much moisture, keeping them out of the moisture. It's learning from those mistakes we make them, I think, is what makes us better keepers. And Absolutely. so it's the growth. And that's one of the reasons why we ask it is, you know, that question, I know it's hard for a lot of people, but the reason we wanted to do that question is as we're bringing in people that you know, are known in the hobby like yourself and other people who are new or just starting to see that people who are known have made mistakes too and keep going, it'll inspire them hopefully to keep going and learn from the mistakes they make them and not just leave and get beat up on Facebook by people. So. That's why we asked that hard question. There's, it's, so I'm, I'm glad that you shared that with us. I mean, that was a hard answer, I know. Uh, but that brings us to some fun. Random question time. <laughs> I love these. We'll get in here deep. I love them too. See what we pull out. 
I love how long they are. It's just like a giant fortune cookie. Yeah, so we just wrote them on notebook and tore them up. We're pretty low rent here. And this one comes up, I swear, there's a bunch in here. We pull some almost every week so far. Are natural male enhancements worth the money? <laughs> I watched Jay's answer to this, and I thought that was perfect. Um, I, I've never I've never bought one, so I, I might have to try one out and let you know. Uh, <laughs> somewhere down the line, maybe I'll have to come on the channel again. I'll go get one. I'll try it out. And I'll let I'll let you know what it's. I've never I've never experienced it, so I couldn't really. Tell I, you. I haven't either, and if I did, I probably wouldn't admit to it either. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I think I should try it just one. I mean, uh, I'll, maybe I'll take like half of one. I don't want to get too. I'm I'm down to try anything once, pretty much. You say just take half of one because you don't want to get too cocky, right? See what yeah, I did there. Yeah. See what I did there. <laughs> I, I, get, I, get, <laughs> I get cocky enough sometimes. I don't need the extra pills uh, to enhance it. <laughs> All right, the next serious question is, how did you get started in the hobby? I was into dinosaurs as a kid. Like, some of my first memories, you know, I had, like, dinosaur birthday cake. I dressed up as a dinosaur for Halloween, a dinosaur pillowcase. And everything was dinosaur. I knew all the names, you know, all the yep. scientific names. And uh, there was a day we were hanging out in my backyard in Hayward, California, and this, what I know now and what I knew shortly after to be a California king snake came crawling through the backyard. I was four years old, and it came crawling through our backyard. And I was like, oh, snake! And I ran in, I got my dad, and he came out and identified it as a California king snake and that it was non-venomous and that we could, you know, handle it and all that. And it turned out to be my neighbor's pet that had escaped. And my neighbor, <laughs> my neighbor's this biker dude named Snake. Like, nice. Hardcore, like, Hell's Angel dude named Snake. And his whole living room was just like many of our living rooms are, you know, now. Yeah. And reptiles in our living room. Just lizards and snakes everywhere and then my little four-year-old mind was like this dude is living with dinosaurs right and I looked at my dad was like can i can i do this and luckily <laughs> my parents are cool enough to be like yeah let's yeah sure you, you can do that see my parents they let me get a lizard because i was a dinosaur kid too and they wouldn't let me get a snake and so now when they come i'm like this is your fault so you told me no and i have an entire room now so <laughs> but where where do you see this industry going in the future well, I see it growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger. It, it seems, I feel like every other day I see somebody else getting into it. And with, you know, the, with the internet helping, it's, it's just growing. It's getting bigger. It's going to be also with things that, that are happening with us right now. Uh, between your channel and my channel, I think we are the first two re YouTube reptile channels to be sponsored after Dave Kaufman. I think, I believe, I mean, somebody can maybe fact check me on this, but I believe Dave was the first person to have a reptile YouTube channel that got sponsored by a reptile company. Okay. And you and I, I believe, are, this, are the second to come in line to be sponsored by a company to have a YouTube channel. And that, to me, is a sign that it is growing. Because any industry out there that is worth its salt as being an industry in the world of business has companies that sponsor people. Right. It, and, it, and no knock on Dave, because Dave was the first, but I think the DVDs also pushed that for Dave, because, you know, he had the Herpers TV. We also right. had, like, the, the Herpers DVDs, I think, 1, 2, and 3, if I remember correctly, that, you know, so those movies were put out. And I think Zilla was behind those movies some, too, and sponsoring the making of those and sponsoring some of that. So there was, for what, what we're doing, I think it's the first just solely YouTube, you know, that didn't have the DVDs and things behind it as well. But Dave obviously paved some of that way to get that done as well for making that a thing with uh, Zilla, I think. And I think there's rainbow mealworms that he has on his. So, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that that is a great sign that the industry is going to do nothing but grow because that sponsors and things like that, that's a sign of a, of a booming and up-and-coming industry is when things like this start happening. Yeah, and it's... I think you're right. I, I always see it growing, too, because a snake is such a simple pet to keep in a small place. It's like if you have an apartment that doesn't allow cats or dogs, or if you're a person who's gone 12 hours a day after work, this is an animal you can still keep and not feel guilty about being gone 12 hours a day. Right. So, all right. That means it's time for another random question. I love questions. I really do. Questions are fun. Questions make it easier for me to, you know, otherwise I have to think of something to say. This, <laughs> a question I <laughs> this one's a new one, at least new for us. It's Where's Waldo? I think he just walked back behind me right there. I'm pretty sure. If he's if he's in Hawaii, I think he's probably hot in that ski hat and sweater, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got a 
Zelensky hat on. You do, the Freedom Breeder, you're rocking the logo. <laughs> All right, so the next one is, it's, these are getting to, to specific to you now, and that is your films. You know, like, and I, I wrote down to remind me, especially the one with the rain, with Noah and then the snakes striking and coiling and going in reverse and all set to music. How long does it take to do the editing on something like that and kind of walk us through that? On that specific cut right there? You can use that specific cut or, or in general if you want. Can take some time. It can t I mean, all said and done, I think on average, I probably spend at least three hours, three to four hours editing any given vlog. Um, about that, I, it might be more. I might be cutting myself short with the amount of time I spend because I, I enjoy it, so I lose track of how much time it takes me. So, because I'll spend a ton of time on it, I won't think about that time has gone by because I'm enjoying myself so much while I'm doing it. It's such a great creative outlet for me that I, I don't really keep track of how long it's actually taking. But it, is, it can be very time consuming. I've luckily learned some tricks and how to shorten that time down to get things done that I want to happen. Um, but it, it can take a lot of time. To do that clip right there, you know, I had to line it up with the music track and then slow down the clip and then reverse it and find a spot where the, was the middle that would make sense to go with the music. So it, it, it is quite time to, without me having a specific answer, it does take a lot of time. <laughs> I can bet, because it is off the, I mean, it's crazy. Like, I watched that, was just like, Holy crap, you know, like that was amazing. It was amazing. And then, you know, obviously, you know, you have two channels. You've got your reptile channel, and then you've got your vlog. It's more of a family-oriented uh, channel. And but, so they're related, but yet they're also different. So how do you balance keeping both channels and keeping them just different enough, but still keeping them related? Well, when I first started the vlog, I actually did the first 30 episodes or so on Triple B TV. Right. It just had a separate playlist called The Vlog. And then it, it started to get kind of weird because a lot of a lot of people were there just to watch snakes, and I you know, I listened to what people say and comments, and some people were like, uh, you know, uh, we just kind of want to see snakes, and some people want to see everything. I was like, okay, you guys don't want to see everything, just come over to the vlog channel. I'll start that, and it's pretty easy to keep different because they are they have become very different. The editing style is different. The the music on Triple B TV is always the same music. It's always the same format. You have the the intro clips. I've got um, the templates that I lay out and. Mm -hmm. I keep it completely, you know, it's related to snakes or people who are in the industry, you know, doing interviews and stuff like that. And where there's the vlog is like, I wake up in the morning and I, 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 don't, I literally don't know what's going to happen on a vlog before it happens. It, the vlog happens as it's happening. There's no plan. I'm just like, whatever it happens to be happening. I'm in Hawaii, so the vlog is about Hawaii. Or I wake <laughs> up and I'm feeling tired and gra crappy and feel like going back to sleep. I'll vlog about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that's how it stays different i think i mean there's a lot and, and because of that i, I always do triple b tv I'll, I'll never stop doing triple b tv because that's where that's what got started me on youtube in the first place was doing that and i think it's a big i think it's one of the more important parts of what i do as far as the industry is concerned because i i use that a lot to find other people and help you guys are going to be on triple b tv at one point next time i get a camera yes. next to your face yeah i like to do mine in person i love that you guys do this here because it makes it very uh, flexible you can hit up anybody in the country or the world, really. Yeah. I just have, for part of my process, I need to be able to reach out and, and actually like physically grab your breast or something, or whatever I feel like doing in the moment. I need, yeah, <laughs> see? If you, if you do it on camera, I'm just touching the glass, and it doesn't, it's not, it's not the same for me. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mention grabbing so, breast or thing back there, because it'd take you up on it. Um, that brings us to one more, well, actually two more, but one more random question now. See what this one is. Oh, this is a viewer submitted question. And that is, does this rag smell like chloroform to you? That comes from Cody Catalanato. <laughs> what do you think? Chloroform? Yeah, that's well, that's another one of those things I gotta be in person. You, know? <laughs> you can stick that on my face in person and we can really have some fun. <laughs> so the answer is. Sorry, Cody, he doesn't know. He doesn't know if it smells like chloroform. I can't smell through the camera, man. It's just one of the uh I'm sure they'll figure that out one day. The technology will soon come where you'll be able to smell what, what the person is smelling on the other end of the line. It, it honestly smells like turtle wax. That's, that's the truth of it. But uh, I think I use that one to do my car a few times. And then... Uh, I, can tell you what, I can tell you what my rag smells like. Ugh, Kahlua pig. <laughs> so, you're in Hawaii. How hard is it to leave your animals and be that far away for that long? Well, 
if I didn't have somebody that I trusted and could count on that was, you know, equally passionate about reptiles, then it would be much, much more difficult. But because I have that person, it makes it much less difficult because I know where he's at. I, I, the, the fact that he's there, that I trust him, and I, and I know, you know, where his motives lie and how he feels about the animals and that I've seen him work with my animals before, all those things... Uh, and number four, I've got security cameras set up so I can watch him when he goes in there. <laughs> and that's more, that's more so I can help him. You know, the, the right. security cameras I have, that these nest so cam- I recommend these cameras to anybody who has a room or anything of that sort. You can actually talk to the person that's, that you're watching. You can speak to them. There's a speaker on the camera. Nice. He's, you know, doing something with a snake. I can be like, oh, hey, can you, can you do this? Like, for example, he, he left some of the dirty paper in one of the uh, Home Depot buckets instead of bringing it out. To the main garbage in the garage, so it's sitting in there, you know, collecting up smells. So I, I sent him a text this morning and said, "Hey, that that bucket, you got to make sure you empty that, you know, and get it out of the room when you're done." Yeah. And he said, "Oh, sorry, I, I didn't." Do it. <laughs> See, it make me nervous because it's egg season, so like, you know, it's always egg checking. I like, and I'm I'm weirdly anal about checking my pregnant females. I'm like, "How are you today?" You know, "How are you today?" And then, oh, so it's when I'm gone, I know it just, and I always have somebody here too, or somebody checking on them daily. Like, I'm on the phone with them. Hey. How's it looking? I've got to get a camera like that because I think it would make it easier. And then with three kids, and one of them which is, is brand new, and congratulations, first of all, on that. Thank you. How hard is it to find the time to do everything with film, animals, editing, and then three kids? It's, it's a full-time job. It's definitely a full, it's beyond a full-time. It's not, it's not like a nine-to-five full-time job. It's like when you wake up to when you go to sleep. It doesn't, it doesn't end. And sometimes sleep is like this thing I talk about, you know, that I, I imagine one day I'll actually do <laughs> to its full potential. <laughs> uh, seriously, I mean, I've had, the funny thing is I've had people comment sometimes on the channel, it's, it's funny, they're like, oh, oh, he doesn't work. So I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I don't work. <laughs> Just because I don't, I don't have a nine to five anymore. I haven't had a nine to five since I was like 22. Um, but I, I bust my ass. Oh, I believe I it. I bust my ass. I believe it. You know, because it's one thing when your kids are old enough that they're that they're truly like doing chores and helpful. And I know Noah's about that age where he's getting helpful, but he's also that age where you're fostering that interest. So you're kind of having to show things and keep. So it doesn't really save you time, <laughs> but you're building that interest. And so you're having to play dad. You know, keep the house, parenting, all of that. Take care of the snakes, film, edit. Yeah, I would imagine your day is pretty full. Like I, I don't know how you. Yeah. Well, luckily, I mean, luckily it's all stuff that I enjoy doing. You know, I, I love my family. I love my kids and spending time with them. I love making videos. I love working with snakes. So yeah. though it is work and there is a lot of time put into it, it's something I want to be doing anyway. I'm, unfortunately, it's been about four months now where I'm doing this completely full time, not doing any other side work, just videos, snakes, and family. And uh, this is what I've been pushing for for, these, for years now. And, and it's right. finally coming to a point where it's actually happening. And Yes, it is a lot of work, but man, it's a lot of fun at the same time. I can imagine. I think it's great that you, you know, especially with like Noah, because he's I think the oldest one, correct? That you're getting him into that, you know, he's starting to have his own vlog camera, was running around doing some of that, and getting him involved so that next generation. You know, I, I don't have kids, but I love when people bring their family into it, because it just, that's where the next snake breeders come from, and the next snake enthusiasts come from they're going to come from that next generation and if we don't foster that you know whether it's nieces and nephews or children or whoever are going to schools they won't be there you know uh so i i love seeing like you know you know like jay he brought his kids in too and his kid runs a camera and his last video was a, his daughter getting into snakes and things like that i just love seeing those kind of things so but that brings us to the last random question Hopefully it's a good one. I'll tell you if it's your favorite restaurant, I'm throwing it out because that one's happened every time we've done that. I'll, I'll answer it. In and out. In and out burger. All right. This is another viewer suggested question, and this is actually a fairly scientific one from Scott Jennings, and that is: If nothing sticks to Teflon, how does Teflon stick to skillets? Stick to skillets. Right. If nothing sticks to Teflon, how does Teflon stick to skillets? Well, is the entire skillet made of Teflon? I, I think it's just or a spray on coating. It's just a coating. Well, they must put... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's probably because 
Oh, it has something to do with fire engines being red, I think. And uh, Russians fighting the Finns and the Queen of England sailing across the seven seas. Could be. Somewhere in there. And that's, that's why... Uh, it's the same reason fire engines are red. That's what I'm trying to say. Same reason. <laughs> we'll go. I don't really know how they do it. I'd have helped you, but I have no idea. But since they submitted it, we'll we'll put that in there. All right. Do you have anything? I, I, my my final answer is definitely is it's the same exact reason that fire engines are red. If you look up on Google, why are fire engines red? You get it's the same answer. I would imagine. We'll have to check that. I'm gonna Google that later just to see. <laughs> <laughs> so anything you want to say before you go? Do what you love, love what you do, and don't do it at all. I agree with that. You know, you, you got to chase your dreams. Uh, and when you do chase your dreams, when you hit the down spots, you got to push through them, and, and yes. the highs will come. And, yes, and never as long give as you up. stick with it, you know, you'll overcome everything. So, all right, man, yeah, this has been a ton of fun. I, I, I 100% agree. 100%. And we've, if, you really wanna, if you're doing what you really want to do, it's not easy. It's never easy no. to do what you want to do. It's, it actually gets really hard, but you right. can't give up. Or If you really want to do it, you won't give up. Uh, it's, I agree. I tell you, too, this is what we've been looking forward to because we've been watching your channel for like when we started ours. You know, We were watching yours at the same time. So this is something we've looked forward to doing. When we first had this Olympus Reptiles news idea, one of the first people we said we want to interview with it was, was Brian Cusco. So here we are. <laughs> Like, I was uh, very excited to get to do this. So thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate yeah. it more Thanks than you know. Me, so, uh, And it, I don't know when it will be coming out, but it will be coming out really soon. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did because what I say is true. We've watched this guy since the beginning, and he is, one, a stand-up guy. Two, he's a family man. And three, his videos are some of the top notch. So if you're not checking out Triple B TV, you really should because you'll find that his editing skills are off the chart. Beautiful animals and great information. So anyway, we'll catch you next week.